Welcome back here folks. Season finale, week 12 of the spring summer 2015 over 50 hockey season. And this is another game that I guess you would have to say that just seems pretty pretty meaningless per se. It's just another hour of ice time for both these teams. So we'll see how things play out. I'm Angelo Fontella bringing you all the live action and coverage here at the Ice Sports Forum. Of course, alongside me, Andy Townsend. Andy, looking at this game so far, it seems like it will definitely be be a meaningless game. Oh yes, of course, Angelo. I mean, right now, for the, if you're the Yellow Jackets, if I was the Yellow Jackets manager right now, I would rather look to try to look forward to next week and beating the Grey Wolves next week rather than this week. You know, I could care less about uh, having the opportunity to sweeping them in the regular season. It's you have to play hard. You have to play your best. And even though you only have a certain minute, because here's the other thing too, it looks like the Yellow Jackets will only have seven players, because you have a lot of uh, people who are out. I mean, like Pete Dominici's out on a business trip. Uh, John Maturin is going to be out for this game, I believe. That's what I've been told. Um, you have Bernie Rosinski, who's been out for the season you know, due to his injury. Um, and I, I think I'm missing one more, Angelo. Aren't I? Yeah, it's coming. It's coming somewhere. Um, I know. Right. And maybe Russ Smith out? Yeah, possibly, you know, I mean, he, he or he could be just in the locker room changing. Oh, there he is right now, yeah. No, but uh, regardless, uh, seven players, especially with the way the Yellow Jackets are right now, where, you know, they need most of their group in order to play that strong defensive unit. Meanwhile, for the Grey Wolves, you know, you have pretty much 10 players showing up. And so this, right now in this game, I, I have to give... Uh, the nod over to the Grey Wolves. They're going to be able to win this game because of the, the depth factor. Otherwise, unless if, uh, you know, I could be wrong. You know, Angelo Pontello could perhaps step it up because we've known the caliber of his game. And uh, he can always take the place of two or three, maybe even three hockey players at times. And this could still be a nice defensive game because, again, we've seen a couple of teams, not just in over 50 hockey, but others, that, you know, they can win with seven players and, or at least keep the game very close. So... Judge the, or you can't knock the red, the yellow jackets out just yet, you know. It's all about the timing of the game. Meanwhile, for the Grey Wolves, Andy, again, as long as you got Lou DeMeza, Mark Giacomin, Keith Paganella, another key player on this squad, you know, you're just about set in terms of what needs to get done. And of course, and not to mention when you have the acquisition of Sean Ryan in the mix, you know, these guys, they already have the system going. I mean, after nine games, everything is together and they've just been hot ever since. You know, two wins in a row, they're looking to make it three here. On that note, we will conclude the pregame report brought to you by the Power Play Grill. Best wins in Tampa. And it's here at the Ice Sports Forum. Should be a nice little location to come to. You know, if you actually come here to check out the games here at the Ice Sports Forum, it's a whole lot fu more fun checking them out in action rather than just on a video live broadcast. So we encourage you all to come out to even see the Power Play Grill. Best wins in Tampa. Coming in all various flavors. Also, you could check out the players after the game. That's where they're at. So, get an opportunity to meet some of these star players here in this league. Power play, grow best wins in Tampa. When we return, we will have the face off to you shortly. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Over 50 Hockey on the Fontella Broadcasting Network. Welcome back here, folks. Just about ready to begin the face off. I gotta say, Andy, any more Yellow Jackets that didn't show up to these game, if one of these guys decide not to show up, I don't know how a team could operate with six players, if anything less than seven. Well, at that point, it, it would be more so a blowout for the other team. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily just forfeit. You would still get your ice time, but don't expect anything magical to happen. Butler with the puck, intercepted by Pontello, looking to fire quickly through. He takes the shot, kicked away by Strader. Yellow Jackets looking to start off strong here. Now from Hyman, gets around to Sean Ryan. Pontello looks to fire the shot. This one gets out. Back over to Lussman. Stopped by Butler. Zincata trying to get to the puck first. Gets around Butler. Zincata fires the shot through. Just misses on the outside. And this was going to come back over to Bill Tish. Tish firing the shot. Zincata slips and falls. And this was going to come around to George Butler. Now see, the other key thing, Angelo, is Neil Armstrong is not here either for the Grey Wolves. And of course, he a, plays a valuable asset to their team in terms of the score the scoring production so you're going to have guys like Lou Meza who's going to need to step it up for the Grey Wolves in order for them to win this game Wussman trying to clear this one out stopped by the referee here comes Steve Byrne looking to set up the Bill Tish here comes an opportunity for Tish 
Looking to set up the other way. Into the deep slot, looking for the setup. Lussman firing the shot, almost could have scored an own goal there. Very dangerous opportunity there. Just the, the power on how Lussman just took trying to save the puck for straighter. And again, you have to be very careful when you're doing the angles because that is key. E, you know, that firing shot by Tish, trying to set up and then it deflects off a of Lossman. If that would have went in the net, that would have been rather an embarrassing blooper. Burn to fire the shot. Tish trying to capitalize, couldn't get the right tap in. Tish's pass goes right on the stick of RT3. He'll keep this one moving. Now from Tish, back out over to Mark Berry. Berry trying to keep this one alive for the Grey Wolves. We're gonna set back around to Giacomo. Now comes Sharina the other way. Yellow Jackets on the move. It is four on two. Looking to fire back over to Jackson. Will lose control of the puck and it gets over to Strader for the save. See, even with seven players right now, I mean, and of course, it's not as much of a meet in the full game either way, like we were saying before, but the Grey Wolves are not looking per se. They're not very interested in trying to burn out their energy in this one. You know, they're gonna let the shots come, especially considering. The Yellow Jackets only have seven players. It's like a boxing match, per se, where they're gonna let the other team throw up as many punches as they can, and by the time they start getting tired, that's when they're gonna rev up the juices and they're gonna just blow this game away. Jackson and Giacomo again on the face-off. This one gonna come back over to Pontello. Looking for the setup. Finds Jackson. Jackson gets around his man, will fire the shot again over towards Russ Smith, and it is saved by Strader. The yeah, only Strader's gonna have to take a couple of more blows in order for the Yellow Jackets to start getting tired out. You know, he's gonna be doing everything he can to make sure he's saving this game, and of course, the Grey Wolves are gonna be doing everything they can defensively. And now with Demeza and Lussman checking in, maybe this will be an opportunity for the Grey Wolves to uh, start capitalizing. Barry trying to get this one cleared out. Stopped by Giacman. RT3 barely got back on size. That could have been dangerous for them if uh, he still couldn't have controlled himself. And of course, you know, you're doing everything you can for the Grey Wolves. They can't get over cocky here just because there's only seven players. They have to still play their game and they need to play within their means. Lussman getting back towards the puck, looking to regroup. And Pontel loses control of the opportunity. Three on all, big time opportunity. Russ Smith over to Pontel, looking to fire back the other way. Gets denied. Sincata back over to Mike Jackson. And Lussman trying to get this one cleared out. Here comes Pontello. Lussman trying to get this one away to Demeza. Sharina fires a shot off of Lussman, skates. Back over to Pontello the other way. And coming in the way is Andrew Hyman. And that's probably what they needed too. Yeah, of course, whenever Pontello's out there on the ice, as long as you have have aggressive players like Andrew Hyman and Lou Demeza, you're gonna stand a chance. And of course, set up opportunity just blown the other way. Here comes Butler trying to get this one back over towards Ryan, the other direction. Sean Ryan trying to keep the puck alive. This one's gonna get knocked away by Sincata. Back over to Butler, looking for the setup to Hyman. Can't get there, now back over to Sincata. Now it's gonna be off to Jackson. Jackson will move this one up. And Jackson will get this one dumped out. Back over to Mitch Starr. Starr off the boards, looking to set this one over towards Sharina. Will fire the shot, Strader knocks this one away, back over to Paganella. Off the glass, Steve Paganella, and now back over to Steve Byrne taking a lot of time with the puck, and he's just gonna go ahead and dump this one out. Starr gets the pass out to Sean Ryan. Looking back over to Hyman the other way, instead Russ Smith trying to get a hold on the puck, could not. Hyman looking off of Steve Byrne. Shot still being fired. Back over to Byrne, barely getting this one out. Now Paganella will regroup for the Great Wolves. He'll fire the shot as Paganella. Deflected off of Russ Smith. Back over to Ryan, and he'll put this one in the yellow jacket end. Hyman skating to the puck. Looking for the setup for the one timing opportunity of Paganella gets denied. Now back over to Butler. Shot taken the other way. Now Sharina to Bill Tish. Hyman back over to Sean Ryan. Now it's over to Steve Byrne. Byrne to Yellow Jackets. Bill Tish, back over to Russ Smith in the Grey Wolf zone, will fire the shot. Shoots it right into great, two Grey Wolf defenders. Russ Smith trying to keep this one alive, bouncing puck. Now back over to Steve Byrne. Sean Ryan looking for that opportunity, now back over to Mitch Starr. This is gonna come around over to Fontello. And he's forced to dump it out, had to make sure everybody was on size at first. 
Now it's to Paganella. Back over to Giacomo and just misses Tish. Giacomo into the yellow jacket zone. Looking for the open setup here. Fires back the other way over to RT3 and this one goes through. Gray Wolves with the 1-0 lead. Ray Toller just came in at the right place at the right time. And the Gray Wolves strike first, 1-0 with 7.08 to go. Again, it's all about keeping. And again, Yellow Jackets are going to be doing everything they can to he keep up with these Gray Wolves. But now, of course, you're starting to see them getting a little bit out of shape. You know, a little bit out of sorts here. And it's all now about trying to keep this one alive. Jackson will get this one back over to Pontello, and now he's going to have to step it up to help out the Yellow Jackets get this one to be a tie game again. And there's another icing call, so this one's going to be coming all the way back deep in the Yellow Jacket zone. But of course now, Andy, when you got Ludemez out there and, and the likes of Ray, Ray Toller again and Mark Berry and Mark Jockman, they have an opportunity to make this a quick 2-0 lead. We'll see how they play things out. But especially, again, with seven players, there is no need, per se, to just have Pontello out of center position or forward because you've got others that can get the job done. And here comes a big opportunity here. Russ Smith looking for Mike Jackson. No, he might take this one himself. We'll slide this one back around to Jackson just out of his reach. We'll slide back the other way. Strader trying to hold on to the puck, and he does for the save. Three on no opportunity. Yellow Jackets trying to come up with the team chemistry, and that time they just... Couldn't get the right shot off, couldn't control the puck the way they wanted to. And that allowed Strader to come up with the save. And again, this is where, you know, this, this can't be a discouragement for the Yellow Jackets. They're doing everything they can to capitalize and they just have to continue to fight hard. That's all they can do in this game. And so, checking in now for Mark Berry is Sean Ryan. I believe he'll, he'll play back. No, he's going to come to the outside on the faceoff. Jackson and Hyman, and there goes Steve Byrne, fires a shot. It's another save by Strader. Back over to Butler. To Lussman. Setting up over to Ryan. Ryan gets the pass out to Andrew Hyman. And with the Meza, look out, two on one. Hyman looking to capitalize, fires a shot, deflected away by Chewy, and now comes Pontello the other way. We'll flip this one out to Sincata. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Another defender in Demeza coming back. Sincata fires a shot, just hits the outside of the net. Another opportunity for the Yellow Jackets, just gets denied. This one out to George Butler. Jackson picks up on the puck. We'll fire the shot again. And it is saved by Strader. They're not making the shots any um, harder for Strader. They're just taking the simple shots and they're shooting right at him, Angelo. That's what it looks like anyways from our view. You know, not a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, make finesse moves off of Strader, especially with the, with the players that they have right now. Jackson and Giacomo on the faceoff. Sincata gets it back over to Paganella. And Jackson gets a piece of the puck off of Paganella's pass. Looking to try to finish this one through. Sincata will get to the puck. Now back over to Bill Tish trying to get it back to Sincata, back to Tish. To Mascherina firing the shot just wide of the net. Pontello will have to come through now. Back over to Sincata. Looking to set up the other way. Here comes RT3. Sets it back over to Barry. Looking for Giacomo. Giacomo coming into the Yellow Jacket zone. Looking for the setup. We'll get this one passed out to Toller. Toller's pass across the middle. Here comes Sincata. Now fires over to Bill Tish. Off to Pontello. Big opportunity here for Angelo Pontello. Paganello trying to get back. Here comes Pontello looking to fire the shot. And it gets denied by Strader. And it looked like Russ Smith was trying to capitalize quickly. Paganello lost a little bit of balance there. Now Sharina looking to skate after the puck. Trying to beat out Sharina for it. And he does. And for these seven yellow jackets, they are doing everything they can to stay alive. And look at them right now. I know it's only... Uh, 
427 remaining in the opening period, but the Gray Wolves have had at least six, seven opportunities to put this game out of hand, and they're just getting stuffed out by the seven Yellow Jackets here. I'm telling you, Andy, we're going to have probably have an exciting game until uh, the Gray Wolves start throwing it on. And again, you know, you're doing everything you can as the Yellow Jackets, but for the Gray Wolves here, they're still trying to find, find answers to uh, the Chewy problem, but it's all about trying to figure out what you need to do as a team to uh, capitalize and exploit this defensive Yellow Jacket effort. And of course, they will shift they're shifting Demeza back to defense. And it's Hyman and Tish on the faceoff. Demeza trying to keep this one alive. Gets it out to Butler. Now over to Hyman looking for the finish and it gets knocked out by Sharina. Hyman back over to Ryan. Stripped loose by Tish now from Burn. Back over to Bill Tish. Tish fires the shot. Kicked away by Strader and he comes out of the crease to make the save. Again, another dangerous uh, effort. And it was a huge risk there by Strader, of course, kicking it out like that. If any other Yellow Jacket was there to take it away, that probably would have been a tying goal. Fuck out to Sean Ryan, trying to work off of Steve Byrne. And Byrne gets this one cleared out by the Grey Wolves. And surprise. See, here's the other thing I'm, I'm still not getting, Andy, about these Grey Wolves. You got, you got some... Fast skaters, you know, some skate burners, however the terminology you want to put it, in Andrew Hyman, Lou Demeza, Mark Giacomo, and Steve Paganella even, and you still only have one goal on the board. That's That to me is pretty amazing, you know, in terms of the Grey Wolves not capitalizing. Well, right now, especially after the two wins that they've posted off, they're doing everything they can to try to find a way to score here, and they're doing everything they can. Shot fired, Demeza on the rebound, can't get it out the other way, but now, just as we saw right there, Lou Demeza even trying to play the uh, cherry picking role, just sitting out there by the blue line looking for someone to pass it to. I mean, Grey Wolves are gonna be doing just about everything they can to try to blow them out, but here comes Pontel the other way. We'll fire the shot, and this one goes too high. He lifted the shot too high, it looked like he had straighter beat there, but the shot he fired was just over the crossbar, and that was a huge opportunity for the Yellow Jackets to tie this one up. Jackson will move this one. Back over to Giacomin. Giacomin working around the outsides, bouncing puck by Steve Byrne. Here comes Sharina with the puck. He'll keep this one moving. Sharina looking for Jackson on the right side. Stripped loose by Paganella. And here come the Grey Wolves the other way. Off the boards, RT3 trying to skate for this one. And it'll be cleared out by Steve Byrne back over to Simcata. Right now, Andy, I gotta admit, the only uh, the opportunity they got now, it's all about the... Uh, it looks more like a pickup game rather than an over 50 hockey game at this point. Yeah, you just got guys at this point skating out. We're not even through the first period yet, so very uh, surprising we see that happening. Mike Jackson and Andrew Hyman on the faceoff. Yellow Jackets once again have to make more substitutions. Pontello will come up with the puck, will fire the shot. And it's a quick glove saved by Strader. That was probably another exceptional skill of just quick reactionary he timing there by Strader. Pontello did everything he could to take that shot, and of course, Arnie would have none of it. He's not willing to give up that tying goal easily. Back over to Pontello again. We'll flip this one out to Jackson this time. Now back over to Demeza. Takes it away too much. Jackson held up by Demeza, and this one's going to come back over to Butler the other way. Now off to Lightning Lou. Into the yellow jacket zone. He's by himself. Hyman trying to step up. We'll fire the shot the other way. Back over to Butler. Shot taken away from Pontello out to Sincata. And this one's going to come back over to Lussman. And he'll skate all the way back in his own end. Gives the puck up over towards Ryan's side. Now back over to Hyman. Hyman will take this one himself. We'll work on the outside. 
still with the puck, looking for an open opportunity. He'll fire it back over to Mitch Starr. Starr will wind up for the shot, and Chewy is there for the save. This puck coming back the other direction. This one comes back over to Mitch Starr. Back over to Pontello, stopped by Starr again. This one coming around towards Jackson, setting up the Sincana firing shot, just not the right angle that they wanted. Puck stopped by Giacomo. Sharina looking to capitalize. Another bouncing puck goes high. Back over to Pontello's side, looking to set up again. Yellow Jackets look from Sincata now over to Jackson firing the shot. Knocked away by Strader again. From Sharina back over to Tish. Another rebound chance here. Looking to fire the other way. Gives it off with the stick of RT3. Yellow Jackets have to regroup. 13 seconds to go. Pontolo trying to get this one cleared out. Jackson trying to get to it first. Stopped by Paganella. And at this point, Yellow Jackets just may want to eat the puck. And that's going to do it there. End of one, Grey Wolves only getting a goal, and they have a tight 1-0 lead against this Yellow Jacket team doing everything they can, and you can tell by the likes of Larry Sincata, he's already gassed after one period. Well, I'm not surprised. Again, when you have seven players for the Yellow Jackets, everyone is expected to be well-conditioned and to keep up. Otherwise, if you're huffing and puffing by the end of the first period and you can't get the stamina up for the other two periods, that's going to hurt, and then it becomes six players and five players, and then... Suddenly, the Grey Wolves will have enough juice on the bench to try to make an opportunity happen. So, it's all about making sure they get the uh, right opportunities they need because that's where it's going to count the most. But first intermission, 1-0 Grey Wolves. We'll be right back. This is Over 50 Hockey on the Pontella Broadcasting Network. Second period beginning. The Mez are trying to fire it across the other way, looking for burn. And this is going to come back over to Wasserman. Finds Hyman. Trying to make a move around Pontello. Looking to set it up back over to Ryan. And it's a glove saved by Chewy. And Phil McClung is not going to get denied anything here. Because he's getting everything coming after him. Pontello will flip this puck high. Not enough uh, distance, if you will. He's going to try everything he can to get around Russman, but he was able to control this one. Now back over to Russ Smith to Jackson. Jackson's pass. Comes back the other way. Stopped by Pontello. Angelo Pontello regrouping. Looks like he's going to take this one himself, and he's got Jackson to work with. Jackson firing the shot. Kicked away by Hyman. Now back over to Jackson, looking to try to finish this one. Butler back over to Byrne, just out of his reach, now comes around over to Bill Tish. And this one comes back around to Hyman. Stopped by Tish, looking to get this one cleared out. Lustman looking to clear this one out, stopped by Byrne, trying to get around Sean Ryan, here comes Sharina the other way. Out to Sincata. Larry Sincata back over to Tish, just out of his reach, now Bill Tish has to regroup. We're going to set up the other way. Now back over to Byrne. Byrne fires a shot right into Mitch Starr. Back over to Tish. Looking to set up the other way. Bounces through. Bounces by straighter correction. And now Butler trying to clear this one out. Stopped by Sharina. Will wind up the shot himself. Goes through and it's in. Matt Sharina fires the shot through. Arnie Strader thought he had it. And I don't know if that one went through the five hole. It looked really convincing there that it did. And of course, Matt Sharina, you gotta give props to him. He was looking for that open chance and he got the shot through. Uh, we have ourselves a tied game now. 10 18 to go. One all. Yellow Jackets with the seven players they have right now. That's, that's the big storyline here, folks. They're getting the job done even with 
pretty much half of their team missing right now. Star stopped by Jackson. Back over to Sharina. Looking to set up the other way, now back over to Paganella. Just beyond Giacomin and Sharina will get this one around to Pontello. Looking for Jackson, instead intercepted by Paganella. And this one's gonna get dumped out in the yellow jacket and Pontello will take this one himself. Puck back the other way. Looking to set up to Giacomin, flip shot, and this one does not go in. Pontello trying to get this one around over to Russ Smith, just out of his reach, and it's gonna come back over to Paganella. This one's gonna get off the boards, and it'll be for an icing call. See, right now, Angelo, if you're the Grey Wolves, you need to just take a second to just calm down, breathe, figure out what you need to get done here, and just do it. Because, I mean, the Yellow Jackets, even though they have seven players, they're still playing together as a team, taking team chances, you know, and they have a goal already. And meanwhile, if you're the Grey Wolves, you're still in that mindset of, even though you have more players, you're trying to get it back to the old ways of overstacking everyone at the forward position and leaving no defenders back. And even though there's only seven players for the Yellow Jackets, they're still coming away with two on all breakaways. Demeza finds an open pass intended for Butler. Couldn't control it. Now back over to Byrne. Finds Smith. This one gets around Smith and Butler will pick up on the puck instead. Stopped by Ryan. Here comes Pontello the other way. Gets around Butler. Looking to get around Demeza. Around Lussman in the deep slot, looking to set up to Sincata, just bouncing past too high. Pontello picks up his own rebound, looking around over towards Byrne. Off the boards, fighting with the puck against Ryan. And Demeza trying to come away with the puck. Jackson. Holds up Demeza, and here comes Pontello the other way, finds an open Russ Smith. Misses Steve Byrne, and now it's going to be back over towards Sean Ryan. Just around Hyman and Sharina will get this one knocked away. And again, you can tell these great wolves, Andy, right now, they're still getting frustrated because they feel that they should be up three to one against the Yellow Jackets. Well, it's all about when they're gonna work together to try to play as a team versus the individual efforts. You know, that's gonna be key here. You know, once the Grey Wolves start uh, knowing what their strengths and weaknesses are and they're uh, working together as a team like they've done the past two weeks, you know, that is where they're going to start picking things up and winning. But right now, the Yellow Jackets are the ones playing like a team. Here comes Hyman on an open breakaway looking to get around Steve Byrne. Fired shot, knocked away by Chewy, and this one's going to come back around to Mike Jackson. Looking for Russ Smith, it says it's going to come away by Bill Tish. Into the Grey Wolf zone again. Tish looking to set it up the other way. Jackson looking for an open opportunity. Looking to get this pass back over to Tish. Just bouncing puck, couldn't control it. Now it's over to Sharina. Finds Pontello. Gets around Mark Berry. He'll take this one himself. Gets around Giacomin, looking for a screen. Pontello fires a shot just to the outside of the net. Now back over to Tish, looking to finish. Now from Jackson, looking for Sincata. And of course, Yellow Jackets are going to have to skate back for this one. RT3 trying to get around Sharina. And they'll send two after him. Back over to Giacomin, looking for the setup. Stop by Sharina. Pass off the boards over to Sincata. Looking for an open Mike Jackson over the middle into the Grey Wolf zone, only Mitch Starr back. And Starr will successfully stop Jackson. Mike Jackson gets it back over to Sharina, trying to control the puck. Knocked back by Barry, here comes Pontello. We'll have to regroup. And he will dump this one out instead. Hits Sincata, and that's gonna be an offsides. And Pontello can't believe what he just did. Yeah, you know. That one in one million chance where you're just firing it out and it could go all through everywhere and it just happens to hit your own play. I'm surprised Sin Carter didn't fall down. 6.33 to go in the second period. We are still tied up at one. No one's going to be letting up here and I hope nobody lets up either because this is a pretty exciting game we have going on right now. This one just passed Russ Smith, Paganella. It's going to go through, and it's an offsides call. Yeah, right then and there. Paganella got into that individual mode. They didn't realize that Sean Ryan was 
still coming through, you know, you have to wait, make sure everybody's on site, you know, that's the key. And of course, you know, if I'm Steve Paganella, I don't blame you either, you know, you're looking to try to retake this lead the best way you can. Puck comes back around over to Sean Ryan the other way. And Hyman's gonna take the shot. This one's gonna be intercepted by Pontello. He gives this one away back over to Paganella. Has to make sure everybody's on side. Paganella waiting for an opportunity. And trying to two yellow jackets trying to hold him up, and he's forced to dump this one out in the end. Back over to Steve Byrne. And checking in now for, for Paganella will be Lustman. As this fucking gets moved up by Sean Ryan, back over to Demesna. Gets this one over the middle, looking for Hyman. This one comes back around over to Hyman, looking for the setup the other way. This one comes back to Sean Ryan. Back over to Demesna. Lightning Lou will fire the shot, shoots it into Pontello, and will get this one cleared out. That shot just got blasted into Pontello's shins. Uh, and my shins are killing me right now as we speak. Back to Steve Byrne, out to Sincata. Makes a move around Lustman, here comes a big opportunity, three on no. Looking to pass around the other way, Steve Byrne trying to capitalize, another three on no opportunity for the Yellow Jackets, can't capitalize. How many more times will you get those opportunities? Three on no, and everybody's there. You should be able to score in a position like that. And here comes Demez on the left side, looking for that open shot. He fires it, deflected by Chewy. Pontello will quickly get this one out. Finds Jackson, here comes a two on one opportunity, only Lustman back. Jackson fires the shot, deflected away by Strader. Steve Byrne looking to come up through with the finish over to Russ Smith. Gets the tap, but not the right tap they were looking for. Demez is trying to get this one out. Stop by Tish. To Russ Smith. Gets it to Jackson, through Giacomin and Barry's legs. And now comes Sharina trying to get to the puck first. Giacomo looking for Sharina, and this one's going to come all the way back in the yellow jacket end. RT3 coming up on Angelo Pontello. Pontello gets around Giacomo, here we go. Into the Grey Wolf zone with Russ Smith. Pontello losing control of the puck, looking to get this one back past to Smith. Couldn't even find the puck awareness. Jackson fights against Barry for the puck. Jackson continuing to fight. Back over to Sharina, will fire the shot. Misfires the shot. Oh, and that's gonna hurt. And here comes Pontello the other way. Looking to get around Mitch Starr. Still with the puck, trying to hang on. And there's a stick call. That's gotta be a penalty referees and they don't call it. Wow, you gotta be kidding me. That was right in front of the officials, folks. And that 87 referee just let it go. I can't believe this. Yeah, that was a blatant call you missed there, you know. It stick right in Pontello's face and it just brought him down. That, I'm shocked right there. You should have called that. Shot taken and it's going to be stopped by Chewy and he's going to look to get this one out the pit. Back over to Sharina. Held up by Hyman. Sharina will go away with the puck though. Trying to get this one out to Russ Smith to an open Bill Tish. And gives it right back over to Steve Paganella. Yellow Jack is starting to slip a little bit. They need to get back in uh, position there. Looking to set up back the other way. Hyman looking to finish and no shot there. Grey Wolves now looking to do everything they can to set up. Now from Tish. Russ Smith can't skate out there. Now it's back over to Mitch Starr. Trying to keep this one alive for the Grey Wolves and this one will go to Hyman. Puck bouncing off of Hyman. This one coming around to Sincata working off against Paganella and this one's going to come all the way back in the Grey Wolf end. Mitch Starr will get to it. Back over to Sharina looking for the setup shot. We'll fire it through. And Strader is there and he'll hang on to the puck for the save. 2.16 to go. And Pontello will check back in and the Grey Wolves look like they're going to make a lineup change here. Pontello and Byrne back as the defenders. Jackson and Hyman go out at the faceoff. This one back over to Pontello. Will fire the shot himself, and Strader will hold on to this one for the save. Hyman and 
Jackson now. Once again on the faceoff, this one over the Ponce. Oh, we'll fire the shot, and it's sucked in by Strader again. Pontello's doing everything he can to try to fake out Strader, at least maybe get him to rebound a shot so that one of his forwards can come in with the say or come in with the finish there, but Arnie Strader is not letting anything pass him right now. This puck goes back over to Steve Byrne. We'll get the pass out to Pontello. Pon Paganella trying to get in the way, and here comes Hyman, and here come the Gray Wolves. This is going to come back over to Demeza. Off the boards, out to Butler. Taken away by Jackson. Jackson, now out to Pontello, looking for the setup here for the finish. Over around the other way, stopped by Paganello off the boards. This one coming back over to Steve Byrne. We'll fire the shot. Just a little out of the reach for Pontello to finish. And there's another shot. Strader trying to hang on to his balance. Yellow Jack is trying to jab the puck in, but Strader holds up his ground. And Arnie Strader right now, he's just, he's holding on strong here. They're doing everything they can. And I'm telling you, Arnie Strader's having rather one of the better games in his career at the moment. And he's uh, returned here trying to uh, see if he can pick up a win himself. There he was. Just to clarify what everybody's talking about, what Andy's talking about, folks. Uh, last two weeks, Arnie Strader was out, regardless of if it's vacation or wherever. And Brian Vick, who played defense this year, went back to the keeping position, and he got the Grey Wolves two strong victories. And now with Strader back in net, with Vick being out right now, along with Armstrong, Arnie Strader's trying to pick up his first true win as the keeper for the Grey Wolves this year. Sharina slips and falls. And this puck gets fired into the Grey Wolf bench. 55 seconds remain in the second period. Both teams trying to hang on. Neither one of them want to let up the momentum here. And right now it's just locked in tight. It's anyone's game. That's the love about over 50 hockey right now. It's anyone's chance here. And I can't wait to see what, what the other stuff has in store. Ryan trying to fire this one in. Stop by Sharina. Back over to Steve Byrne the other way. Taking lots of time with the puck. And RT3 gets in the way and stuffs out Byrne. Back over to Sean Ryan. Shot taken by Giacomin. Back over to Ryan. Byrne trying to get this one cleared out. Russ Smith's got to skate for it. No, it'll be Jackson instead. Working off of Sean Ryan. Back over to Toller. Toller gets out to Giacomin. Two Yellow Jacket defenders back. Giacomin trying to get through two Yellow Jackets and he is held up. Can't get the shot off he won and now he's in the deep slot looking for more men to set up to. And Sharina looking to get this one cleared out. Stop by Star. We'll fire the shot high. This one going around the other direction. That's how the second period is going to end. Yellow Jackets hanging on with the Gray Wolves. One all still is our score. And I got to tell you Andy. Third period, who knows what's going to happen. Yes, the Yellow Jackets have done it two periods so far. They could do it for one more period. Now, if this game gets into a shootout, regardless, it will be... I have to say, I have to give it my classic rating here because for the Yellow Jackets to hang up, hang on the way they're doing right now, and the only uh, key players you have on that team is Macharina and Angelo Pontello. That, that speaks a lot of volumes right now for this Yellow Jacket team that is doing exceptionally well. Meanwhile, for the Grey Wolves, it's just all about what you need to do. You've only been able to score one goal on a very deprived Yellow Jacket roster, and you're again you're reverting back to your way, your old ways, while you were getting blown out so much in the first half of the season. And that's what it just seems like they're going back to right now. Even though, you know, despite being up by three players, you know, you got the ten players and you're doing what you can. Well, again, it's going to come down to you know Steve Paganella, Lou Demeza. Uh, you know, leading the charge here. They need to uh, play smart. They need to be uh, very protective with the puck, and it's all about how how to control the factors here. You know, Grey Wolves can do it. They just need to make sure they got everything down intact because that is where it's going to come down. No matter twelve minutes left to go. Second intermission. One all is our score here. Yeah. 
and for speaking for Andy as well. We can't wait to see what the third period has in store. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Over 50 Hockey on the Pontello Broadcasting Network. Third and final period. Larry Sakata, Andrew Hyman on the faceoff. And this puck just gets blasted in the air. This one now from Serena back over to Pontello. Pontello looking to move this one up quickly. It's going to be intercepted by Paganella instead. And this one's going to slide all the way back over to Chewy, and he's going to hold on to the puck for the save. That's right. At this point, you can't take any chances. I mean, this is where it's going to come down to right here is the Gray Wolves, especially now that you can tell that the Yellow Jackets, you know, regardless of how well they're playing, you know, you know that they're going to be tied in this third period for the Gray Wolves. That's going to be the key to capitalize on the uh, on the depth and the stamina factor. And this one's going to get intercepted by Tish, and Mitch Starr is going to quickly skate back for the puck. Bill Tish will fire the shot, bounces off a straighter. Tish looking to deflect it in over to Sakata, and another missed opportunity back over to Tish. Sharina bats it in, and it's in. Unbelievable! The puck was sitting there, bounces off a straighter at first. Bill Tish looking to try to capitalize. And he misses opportunities, and then of course Sharina just came in at the right place at the right time. And he capitalizes for the Yellow Jackets, and it is now a 2-1 lead. Yellow Jackets lead for the first time this game. That is where it's going to come back to it. And again, it's all about trying to keep the... Yeah, just have to keep your composure here. If you are the Grey Wolves, you need to start coming up with the position and trying to work together as a team. I mean, you've got the players to do it. You just can't get all frustrated just because you've allowed now two unanswered goals. Demeza with the puck. Just a little too hard for Butler. And this will be for an icing call. See, now at this point, you know, like we said before, Angelo, this is the part for the Grey Wolves where they're either going to get really frustrated and start making a lot of mental errors, opening up the door for the Yellow Jackets, or they can get their act together and, you know, play smart hockey and stop passing the puck around. Um, and, you know, working together and coming up with a system to score. Pontello coming up with the puck and Mark Berry barely gets it out of Pontello's possession. This one will be knocked back over to Steve Byrne. Back over to Russ Smith. Looking for Jackson's got him. Into the Grey Wolf zone. Three defenders back. Mike Jackson fires the shot. Deflects into a Grey Wolf defender. Here comes Pontello. Fires the shot. This one goes too high. Back out to RT3. Looking for Giacomin. He said just out of his reach. This one back over to Giacomin again. Intercepted by Pontello, Russ Smith has to get back on sides. And Pontello will look for Bill Tish. Gets the pass off to him. Looking to set up the other way. And Jackson gets canceled out by a Grey Wolf defender. Here comes Mark Giacomin. And this was going to get just out of Demezza's reach. And here comes an icing call. Jackson, Andrew Hyman on the faceoff. Paganello's shot fired this one back over to Pontello, trying to keep this one alive. And this puck is flipped out and out of the rink. But right now, again, 9.57 to go. It is still anyone's game, you know. And that's the, that's the crazy part about games that are tied all the way through. You think it's going to get really competitive, especially in the final parts of the minutes, but we're not even at that stage yet. We still have lots of time left to go where it's just anyone's game, and now it's just both teams need to be playing smart hockey right now. Mitch Starr gets it back over to Butler. Stopped by Pontello. Butler regains possession. Tish fighting against Hyman for the puck. This one comes around to Sean Ryan. Back to Starr. Back to Paganella. This one comes around to Serena off the boards looking for Tish. Now back into the possession of Mitch Starr. Looking to sit the pass out to Hyman. Taken away by Pontello. Now gets the pass out to Serena. And here come the Yellow Jackets again. Looking to pass this one back around the other way. 
Stop by Butler. From Hyman over to Butler again. Mid star. Back over to Steve Byrne. And his pass deflected by Paganella, intercepted. Gray Wolves moving this one into the Yellow Jacket zone. Paganella looking to flip this one around to Hyman the other way. Now back over to Pontello. Finds an open Mike Jackson. It's two on one currently with Sincata. Sincata fires a shot, kicks away by Strader, trying to hold on to the puck. He does for the save. Oh, and how far out Arnie Strader came out of that crease. Just had every Gray Wolf fan cringing. Could have been a, could have been a dangerous. That was a risk right there, period. But could have been a dangerously close opportunity for the for the Yellow Jackets had they picked up on the puck. Well, of course, it's all going to come back to um to bite them hard for the Gray Wolves factor. You know, it's all going to be about what they need to do to play small hockey, and you know they can't take any chances. And for the Yellow Jackets right now, even having Angelo Pontello out there playing a little bit of forward. You know, that's not the uh, smartest uh, idea either. You know, because he's, they're going to need him at defense right now. And it looks like he went back to the de defenseman position. But you have Mike Jackson, Larry Sincata, and Ross Smith all playing together fairly well, mind you. And it's all going to come down to, you know, them to hold up. And defensively right now, when you only have a one-goal lead, you need the best defense you have. Especially when the Grey Wolves decide to pull a six-man later. Demezza with the puck. He'll take this one himself. We're going to set up back the other way, and Serena will come away with it instead. Finds Smith. Back over to Russ Smith. Taken away by Mark Berry. Taken by Demezza. Demezza on the right side, looking to set up to RT3 again, looking for goal number two. And this one's going to come all the way back. Icing call will be made. All right now with the likes of both of these players going on, both these teams going on, Ray Toller scoring the lone goal for the Gray Wolves, and of course Matt Sharina scoring the only two goals for the Yellow Jackets here, and he'll be looking to try to get a hat trick eventually. It's all about coming down to what comes what, but right now in terms of the score line, it's, you could say it's all T3 versus Matt Sharina's game, but you know, as long as they're playing together and you have the other supporting cast members doing their part, that's what makes it really a truly special game. Sean Ryan trying to get this one around to George Butler and said Pontello will take this one away. Gets this one cleared out. Stopped by Mitch Starr. Intercepted by Tish. Look out. On the left side. Looking to set back up the other way. Can't find Mitch Starr and open puck. This one's sliding back. Pontello and Hyman trying to fight for the puck. Looking to set back up over to Hyman the other way. Pontello trying to make the stop happen. Sean Ryan trying to capitalize, and Chewy holds his own. Another dangerous opportunity. Gray Wolves are starting to work the Yellow Jackets here a little too much. And the Yellow Jackets are starting to bend a little bit. They almost had an opportunity there, just nobody was really uh, capable of finishing off in the right position. Icing call been made, 6-12 to go. And if the Yellow Jackets can hold on for this 2-1 victory, that will be amazing. This one comes back to Burns. And it gets past the mezzo, and this one's going to slide all the way back. Back over to the mezzo. And Lightning Lou will take this one himself. The mezzo looking to finish the other way to Giacomo, just a little too far out of his reach. Back over to the mezzo in the deep slot. Held up. Here comes RT3 looking for the finishing touch. Deflects off a Chewy. Back over to Pontello. 
Pontzola trying to get this puck flipped high. Stopped by Tish. And it says he's stopped by Barry, taken away by Giacomin. Giacomin held up. He'll fire the shot himself. Chewy is going to feed this one out to Pontello off the boards. And this one's going to come all the way back. Barry trying to reach out to Tish. Back over to Star. Shot taking this one back over to Steve Burns. Stopped by Paganella. Pontello trying to get to the puck first before Barry. Working off of Mark Barry. And here comes Bill Tish with the puck. Looked like he had an opportunity to get it. Now taken away is Jackson. Will spin around the other way, trying to control that puck. And just out of his reach, just comes back over to Mitch Starr. Starr's pass gets out to Di Giacomin. Back over to Giacomin the other way. 4.38 to go. This one's going to come back over. Giacomin entering the B slot. Back over to Starr. Star will fire the shot. Back to Ryan. We're going to set it to Giacomo and almost had a piece of it. And Steve Burns going to try to get this one cleared out. Stopped by Mitch Star. Gray Wolves with another opportunity to rebound here. 4.15 to go in the game. And now you can tell Angelo, they're really starting to get tired here. Yeah, Yellow Jack is trying to desperately get this one out. They need to change their two men right now. That's the key thing. And the Gray Wolves can take advantage of it if they play their cards right. Steve Byrne now gets it out to match Sharina. Open opportunity. Into the Grey Wolf zone. Sharina still with the puck. We'll fire the pass out to Bill Tish. Time out. And this one gets deflected away. 3.47 to go. Star finds Hyman. Hyman trying to get this one around Pontello. And this one goes back in the Yellow Jacket end. Chewy trying to get this one away from Hyman. Barely does. Another risk taking. But at the same time, it pays off for the Yellow Jacket. So Smith gets a piece of the puck. He'll skate to this one. Into the Grey Wolf zone, kills off more time off the clock. 3.25 to go. Hyman will take this one out to Paganella now. Paganella will move this one up quickly. Looking for Sean Ryan. No, it's going to be out to Demeza instead. And it's going to be an offsides call. Three seventeen to go. Of course, I got to tell you, Andy. Whew. My knees are just shivering just looking at this game right now because, again, you have a... If the, again, if the Yellow Jackets can pull this one off, 2-1 victory over the Grey Wolves, that is going to be an astounding, astounding accomplishment from all that they've done this season. And it just also goes to show you, you know, just the, the team effort, the team chemistry that these players have right now is, is unbeatable. You know, the way that they're playing right now, anything they can get just about anything they want done here. Demez is trying to hold on to the puck and says it's going to be taken away by Jackson. Jackson with the puck trying to be held up by RT3. Back over to Jackson the other way. Big opportunity here. Jackson fires the shot. Knocked away by Strader. Back over to Hyman. Toller trying to get a piece of the puck. Now Pontello will have to skate back for the puck. We'll work quickly here. Looking for Steve Burns. Got him. Stopped by Demeza. Deflected off of Jackson. Pontello will get to this puck himself. He'll fire this one off the boards. Finds Tish. And this one's going to go all the way back. Tish thought he had a piece of the puck. But it gets past him. And the icing cause it made two and a half minutes to go. Gray, Gray Wolf still with a lot of time to get back in this one. And of course, again, Angelo, it's all going to come down to what they need to do to get the job done. I mean, they have everything they need here. They're looking up the strategy right now. And it's official. There will be a timeout for the Grey Wolves. Two and a half minutes here to go. And it's all at this point what's gonna, what it's going to come down to here. Grey Wolves looking to try to avoid being swept in the regular season series by the Yellow Jackets here. Two and a half minutes to go. And don't be surprised if they decide to add a sixth man to this crazy situation here. 2-1 Yellow Jacket lead hanging on. This is over 50 Hockey on the Pontello Broadcasting Network. Here we are in the dress room with Larry Sincata. Larry, what kind of beer do you drink after the game? Man, after I'm working a hard game, I drink Bud Light. That's the beer champion. Do you drink it before? No, I drink most of them before. 
Bud Light, beer of champions. Tom Buckholtz, Green Hornet, extraordinaire. Tom, what do you drink after the game? Miller Light. I brought it from the Grey Wolf. They no longer have Miller Light. Only the Green Team. Miller Light, beer of champions. Tastes great. He calls it his white lightning. Just getting back to the action here, folks. Two and a half minutes to go if you're just joining us here. Yellow Jackets with a 2-1 lead. Seven players on their bench right now. Gray Wolves trying to find a way to get back in this one. Can they find a way to get through? And of course, you know, there's no, sh there's no shame, Angelo. And, uh... And just like that, they throw a six-man Larry Sincotta, I guess, trying to put it down. And you know what that empty net, you know what's coming. Larry Sincotta, just a memorable season. And that'll just about do it here. Plus, again, you know, in terms of... It's not going to matter anyways after the regular season because Sin Carter has had his best 12-13 goal so far this season. This puck comes back from Simcata. Deflected off the other way. This one coming back to Fontella. We'll have to regroup. And he's going to skate all the way back. Trying to kill off some time off the clock here. Looking out to Simcata, trying to spread out the Gray Wolves the best way he can. This one off the boards is going to get out to Jackson. No, Pontella may get this one himself. And Demeza shoves Jackson, just slams him into the boards. Now, I would not be surprised if there, here comes a big misconduct here, major penalty. And if you're Luda, and I gotta be asking, if you're, why would you do that if you're Luda Meza? That's just uncalled for at this point. Yeah, not, not really as much. I'm not sure if he was trying to go after Pontello or whatever, but that's 10 minutes, and I would not be surprised if uh, he gets suspended. But really, no need for that. And of course, Mike Jackson would definitely want to have a few words with the Grey Wolf bench. Oh my goodness, but I have to mention, if this was an NHL league, folks, that would have been a highlight hit to see. Oh, that, that definitely means you don't want to get Ludemez all mad, you know, on the wrong side if you're going to do something like that. But I mean, yikes. That's a crazy hit, and of course, that's a hit you'd see in an over 35 league, if, if anything. But whoo, crazy hit there. And Mike Jackson still trying to get his balance off. And this one's going to get over to Marcia. And the referees are only going to give him two minutes. That's very merciful right now by the referees. They knew, they know definitely that that should have been like at least, um, I guess what, what I should be really saying, Angelo, is like they're very lucky that they've only given the Meza two minutes because normally in a situation like that, the problem might have been 10 minutes with the way they're playing. But who knows what else is going to come up from this. Back over to Jackson. This one comes back over to Giacomo. Intercepted by Jackson. And right now in this final minute, they're gonna be looking to just try to kill off this clock. Cause I mean, that's all that you can do at this point. Thirty-two seconds to go. Sharina will try to get this one cleared out. Back over towards, or trying to get it off to Russ Smith. Back over from Giacomo to Hyman. Gray Wolves trying to see if they can maybe score one more goal to pad some stats. And this one's going to head back the other way. Ten seconds to go. Paganella will just walk on in, and it is official. 
as the score goes down three seconds, two seconds, one. It is official. The Yellow Jackets will have swept the Grey Wolves in the regular season. Of course, that's probably not going to mean anything come next week because, you know, that's when the real deal is going to happen. Well, of course, again, you have to tip your hats off to the Yellow Jackets. A 3-1 victory with seven players. That is a remarkable season right now. That's where it comes. And, of course, if it wasn't for all these players stepping it up, you know, just consistent effort, the consistent teamwork, they got the job done through, and that is where it comes right there. And, of course, for the Grey Wolves, they're going to take this game and they're going to reflect on this one and then be able to play some more hockey next week because it's going to be a whole lot harder, especially when you have Neil Armstrong coming back and the rest of the gang and everyone else is going to be here ready to go. Well, this has been another production of Pontello Broadcasting Network and, of course, semifinal game, Grey Wolves, Yellow Jackets. We will see how it plays out. But I'm telling you, that crazy game so far and especially it was gotten tight through the third period and who would have thought the Yellow Jackets would have been the team trying to pour it away you know that just a crazy game and of course everybody played their part and that's how you get the job done in a hockey game that's how it goes but for your day I suppose for my Angela Pontello saying so long good night we hope everybody has a blessed evening take care everyone